Look, your asking price for this batch is just too high. I can't buy in at this price. How am I supposed to turn a profit? Come on, hear me out. I'm telling you, this is the single best batch of Sunsetias ever. You won't find anyone who disputes that. I accidentally dropped one into a well, and even the water turned sweet. Even so... <laughs> alright, alright. I'll let you in on a little secret. The boss of Second Life also wants to buy from me, but I haven't responded yet. If you won't take him, I'll just have to partner with them instead. And neither of us wants that. <laughs> okay. Well, when you put it that way... I'll accept your asking price. I'll take all your stock. Don't sell a single one to Second Life. Oh, what are you doing here? And to be clear, these Sunsetias are mine. I got to them first. Don't get any ideas. Actually, we want to ask you about a guy called Juri. Have you heard of him before? Juri? Yes, he's quite well known. I've heard a story about him. They say he was born into poverty. His parents died when he was young, and he was treated cruelly by the local community. One of his neighbors was terribly rude to him all the time, but Juri never retaliated. And when his neighbor went bankrupt, he even helped support the family. He returned cruelty with kindness, oh, injustice with peace offerings. A gentleman of talent and character, and... Uh, oh, how did I not notice him sooner? In fact, maybe I'm not too late. If I could hire him to be the brand ambassador for Wanyo Boutique... Oh, he sounds like a decent man. We can finally breathe a sigh of relief. Why are you asking about him anyway? Uh, you aren't uh, looking for a brand ambassador too, are you? Well then, in that case, the higher bidder takes the... Hmm? Ah, that's Jury right over there. Why don't we go and talk to him? Where? Where? It's him, all right. Looks like he's chatting with Lean Long. Come on, let's follow them and listen in. Try not to let him see you. We want this information to be as truthful as possible. I'll just go and fetch an employment contract. And hey, don't try and cut me out of this. Hey! I understand. Let's walk and talk. You were looking to buy a wineware set? Oh, now I can see that you're a connoisseur, so I won't bother trying to con you. I trust you understand our shop quite well? The truth is, an old friend of mine, who likes to have a drink now and then, he fancies himself as a man of culture, but doesn't care for needless extravagance. So I thought I might buy him a set of high-quality fakes. How very thoughtful of you. Leave it to me, then. Come and collect it at Shigu Antiques whenever is convenient. Thank you very much, Miss Linlong. It's my pleasure, Mr. Jiri. These days, it's quite rare for someone of your standing to still keep up with their old friends. It's nice to see. I'll be sure to pick out a good set for you. You can count on me. Hmm. Jerry seems to get along really well with everyone. Are you satisfied now, Yelan? Seems like everyone thinks Jerry's a great guy. We shouldn't jump to conclusions just yet. Let's go check out the wharf where he usually goes fishing. Ugh. Do we have to? Wait. You're not just trying to dig up some dirt on Juri because you want to be Tianchu yourself, are you? Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But hey, if I do become Tianchu, 
I'll look out for you guys. You'll be able to try all the finest food for free. How does that sound? We will? Well, come on! Off to the South Wharf we go! The wharf is as busy as ever. I hear the anglers here sometimes sell their fish to the nearby fishmongers. Hmm. Let's see what Uncle Soon has to say. Welcome. What would you like to buy today? Sorry to interrupt. We're actually members of the, uh, Liyue Anglers Association, and we just wanted to ask a few questions about someone. We've heard about this young man called Jur Yi, who's supposed to be a fantastic fisherman. Just wondering if you happen to have heard of him? Whoa! Yilin made up a whole fake identity! Without Batty and Eyelid! Ah, yes, Jur Yi. He's been making quite a name for himself recently. I've got some friends who travel all over the place, and they tell me everywhere they go they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm, apparently, he had a rather tough time growing up. Had to work several jobs alongside his studies to make ends meet. How does that saying go? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Well, if there's anything to that logic, he's sure to be phenomenally successful one day. Yeah, we think so too. But I'm afraid your Anglers Association might be in for a disappointment. Oh? Huh? Why is that? He's good at a lot of things, but fishing isn't one of them. He fishes at the wharf and sells what he catches to me on occasion. His catches are always... mediocre. Not terrible, but equally nothing to write home about. If you're looking to recruit some new members, though, I do know a few top anglers I could put you in touch with. That sounds fantastic. I've got a couple of other things to attend to right now, though, so why don't I come back some other time and we can chat over a drink? Sure thing. See you. Everywhere they go, they meet someone who's heard of him. Hmm. Come on, let's keep asking around. Here to buy some fish? It's 300 for one or three for 1,000. You better hurry. When they're gone, they're gone. Hello, we're from the Society for Fish Price Research. We'd just like to ask a few questions. Wow, she switched identity again. Society for Fish Price Research? Uh, I haven't done anything illegal. Stay out of my business. Please, don't worry. We're just here to conduct a simple survey. We've heard about a certain Jur Yi who's been selling fresh fish at low prices in this area recently. Do you know anything about this? So this isn't about me. You should have said something, you know. I know the guy. I can tell you what I know. I haven't heard anything about him selling fresh fish at low prices, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was him. Because he's so poor, his parents died when he was very young, and his alcoholic father still owed a huge amount of debt. No one wanted anything to do with him. He was still a kid when he first came to the wharf. His clothes were ragged, and he had a bandage wrapped around his head. And he managed to survive, thanks to Uncle Tien, who gave him some food. But still to this day, he doesn't have a lot of mora to his name. I mean, he can afford to eat and everything, but you'll often see him haggling with others over just a few mora, so I wouldn't be surprised to find out he's been selling a few fish. It's not like he catches much anyway, so it's not going to affect my business. Uh, uh, don't, don't tell him I said that. You'd rather he didn't know? Well, I spoke to him once briefly, and I just had a feeling that he really cares what other people think of him. I think he has pretty low self-esteem, but hey, it's hardly my place to say anything. What he's achieved already puts most people to shame. And nobody's perfect. I just wouldn't want to upset him. That's all. I see. Well, thank you for sharing that with us. Not a problem. 
And just for the record, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the price of my fish. The more times you say it, the less convincing it becomes. Hmm. Doesn't have a lot of Mora to his name. Okay, let's keep going. Hey, it's you guys! Wait, what's the phrase? Oh yeah, honored to meet you. What brings you to me? The truth is, we are but newcomers to this territory. We heard tell of a great martial artist, Master Dugu, who knows everything there is to know. Hence, we sought you out to ask for your guidance. <gasps> really? People said I know everything there is to know? But of course. We also heard that Master Dugu is a kind and virtuous swordsman who never turns away anyone who comes with questions. Great! <clears throat> so what do you wish to know? Nothing happens on this street that I don't know about. Uh, now she's lying to a kid. So, Master Dugu, have you heard of one by the name of jur -E? Sure have! You mean that guy that all the grown-ups are talking about these days? I've heard many tales of jur -E. For example, um... Uh, I can't remember. Probably because it's nothing that important. I prefer stories about sword-fighting heroes! Oh, I can completely understand that. Then, let me ask you this. Do you remember, roughly, when the grown-ups started talking about jur -E? Oh yeah! I know that! It was about two or three months ago. Before that, people always used to talk about jur -E in a kind of nasty tone of voice. But two or three months ago, suddenly everyone started to like him. Sometimes he gives me candies, so I'm glad that people are starting to like him now. Just as I thought. Huh? What do you mean? I mean, just as I thought, Master Dugu is indeed as kind and virtuous as the legends claim. <laughs> I'm not that great. Oh yeah, one other thing. These days, there's a lot of people I've never seen before talking about jury stories in the street. They seem like nice people. Oh, definitely. Great! So next time I see them, I'll say hi. And I guess I can share some of my candies with them, too. Certainly. You can also tell my friend in Yenshang Tea House about what they're up to. I'm sure my friend would also like to say hi to them. Thank you, ma'am! You're welcome. Well then, fare thee well, Master Dugu. Until we meet again! Any of that sound strange to you? Strange? What was strange about it? Jiri seems to have a great reputation. Uncle Soon and Uncle Gao spoke highly of him, and Dugu Shuo seems to like him too. True, but the issue is, where did his sudden celebrity come from? It almost seems too good to be true. Sudden? Too good to be true? What do you mean? So he returns cruelty with kindness, and had to work to support his studies. These are the kinds of things that make someone well-known in their hometown. But Uncle Soon said even his friends who travel far and wide hear about him wherever they go. That's a little over the top, if you ask me. Do you remember what Dugu Shuo said about jur -E's stories? Clearly they left him with a good impression of the guy. But beyond that, he wasn't interested in the details. That's the reaction I would expect from any normal person. Plus, there's the fact that all this praise of jur -E has only been happening within the last two or three months. His childhood, his studies, the thing with his neighbor, none of these are recent events. So why are these stories only going around now? When you put it like that, it is kinda strange. Of course, if that's all there was to it, I wouldn't look into it any further. Jur E was born into a poor family. Paying people to get his stories out there is within the rules of the game as far as I'm concerned. 
The problem is, do you remember what Uncle Gao said about him? He's stayed poor his whole life. Everything he's earned he's either spent on studying, traveling, or paying off debts. I don't think he has the mora to pay for a publicity campaign. Right. And that changes everything. It could mean a powerful faction is trying to gain influence over the Liu at Shixing. That's the worst case scenario. But all too often, the most pessimistic speculation turns out to be closest to the truth. Someone's trying to gain influence over the Qixing? That sounds serious! What should we do? Even if we asked Jiu Yi about it, surely there's no way he'd admit it! First, we need to find out who's supporting him. Don't worry, I've got a plan. Remember the current affairs and planning stage of the assessment? Since the successful candidate is duty-bound to implement their plan after taking office, their manifesto tells us their stance on key issues. Whoever is secretly helping Jur Yi must be seeking to benefit from his actions after his appointment. So, we should be able to find some hints in Jur Yi's manifesto on who we're dealing with. Come on, let's get back to Yen Shang Tea House. Jur E's manifesto covers a huge range of topics. Looking for details that don't add up will be like trying to find a needle in a haystack. I'll divide the reports into two piles. You take one, I'll take the other. When we're finished, we'll put our heads together. Officially, the assessment is already over, and I'll be expected to announce the results before long. So we have to get to the bottom of this as quickly as we can. Whatever else Uncle Tian might think of Jur Yi, the fact remains that he's one of his favorite students. Any evidence he's left is not going to be immediately obvious. We'll have to look carefully and think critically. This reading is giving Paimon a headache. Uh, let's take a break. <laughs> uh, looks like I'm the first one back, as usual. Oh, hey! It's one of Yeon's little helpers, Shanghua! If you're back, that means... That means you finished investigating Tianwei, right? You betcha. I visited all the commerce guilds and gathered a wealth of information. Every time they asked me to leave, but I always had another trick up my sleeve. Don't drag this out. Just tell us your findings. Yes, Lady Elon. 
To summarize my findings, most people who've had interactions with Qianwei will start out complaining about how proud and arrogant he is, but then go on to give a generally positive appraisal of him. The young master of the Feiyun Commerce Guild said that Qianwei appears arrogant, but he's very scrupulous in the way he works. Once he signs a contract with somebody, he treats them fairly regardless of their background. Who'd have thought? Is it possible that his reputation is fake? Is there any way you can check the accounts of the businesses under his name? In theory, that should be very difficult. But here's the thing. I asked around and found out that almost all of Qianwei's accounts are open to the public. Where he buys from and sells to should be confidential business information, but he doesn't seem interested in protecting it at all. Chen Wei often sees business opportunities that others don't, but once he's made enough mora off of it, it's like he gets sick of it and releases all of his trade secrets. It's like he wants people to know that they still can't beat him, even if he shares all of his secrets. The fact that someone like that can still make mora is pretty infuriating when you think about it. What a strange guy. It's like he's not doing business to make mora, but instead... To validate his theories. No wonder his manifesto contains so many insights. It's all the result of his first-hand experimentation. I'm back! Huh? Ah, how come you're here? Why do you think? Obviously, because I possess superior skills, and am always one step ahead of the competition. Well, when you're the competition, at least. You... Ugh, whatever. I'm not getting into an argument with you. If I hadn't had something else to take care of on the way, I would have been back long before you. Lady Yelan, I have finished investigating Mingbua. Well, we're all ears. The Ministry of Civil Affairs says that Mingbua struggles to get his words out when he gets nervous, especially when he's chatting with strangers. But after a few days of getting to know him, you can pretty much have a normal conversation with him. On the whole, the feedback from the Ministry of Civil Affairs was very positive. He always considers the things that everyone else overlooks. In your opinion, was the Ministry of Civil Affairs' appraisal of Mingbo at all exaggerated? I don't believe so. Mingbo is someone who has slowly but surely earned the reputation he has today. According to Miss Yu, the Ministry often gets Mingbo to take a final look at projects before they're implemented. People feel much more confident in something if it has his stamp of approval. Oh, and also, there was once someone in the ministry who was lying and cheating to try to advance their career. Mingbo gave them the scolding of a lifetime. Apparently, he can be terrifying when he loses his temper. I haven't seen it for myself, though. Whoa, that's hard to imagine. Like I said before, things are not always as they appear. That's what you meant by that. Paimon's starting to get it now. Thank you both. You're free to go now. So, have you finished reading the manifesto? We still have a bit left. <laughs> hmm. I can't see any immediate problems looking at the individual entries. The only one that strikes me as a little unusual is the Chengshu Pool Redevelopment Plan. Chengshu Pool has always been home to many secrets. Plus, Ejdaha once wrought havoc there, so there are even more secrets buried deep underground. At some point, a rumor began to go around that there is great treasure buried beneath Chengshu Pool. A long time ago, with the approval of the Qixing, a mining team conducted an exploratory excavation there. So, did they find any treasure? None. The ruin was completely impenetrable. The only way they could have gotten through the solid rock would have been by blowing it open with a special kind of explosive. The technology wasn't mature enough at that time, so the excavation project was shut down and the treasure became a mere legend. Jur E's manifesto focuses on solving problems, and this treasure hunt seems extremely risky. It seems out of step with the rest of his plans. Still, this one fact alone doesn't tell us much. Everyone wants to get their hands on this treasure. The treasure hoarders, the Fatui, even local Liyue factions. 
Did you find anything? Excavation? Project? Treasure? Did we read anything similar in our half of the manifesto? the Blackcliff Forge workers should get right a first refusal if any suitable projects come up. Did he now? Well, that makes everything much clearer. So Jur E wants the Blackcliff Forge to excavate the treasure of Qiyongshu Pool. Does that mean the Blackcliff Forge is Jur Yi's secret supporter? No, not likely. I've looked into the Blackcliff Forge before. They aren't involved with any powerful factions at present. They do possess some specialized explosives, but it would seem more trouble than it's worth to put so many resources into a risky project like this. Still, since the clues are pointing toward the Black Cliff Forge, we should see where they lead. We may well find something new. <laughs>